This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but I'll talk more about that later. It's been over four months since PepsiCo became the first company outside of Tesla themselves to add the Tesla Semi to their fleet. Fast forward to today and PepsiCo now has a fleet of around 36 Tesla Semis in operation between their Pepsi facility in Sacramento, California and their Frito-Lay facility in Modesto, California. While four months is a relatively short period of time, several key things have happened over this period of time that I want to discuss. And also new information has recently come out, like for instance, I recently came across a source that revealed uh, the price Pepsi paid for the Tesla Semi, and Tesla has also apparently confirmed the battery chemistry for the upcoming 300 mile range Semi Lite. So let's talk all about this. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. When the Tesla Semi was originally unveiled back in December of 2017, Tesla planned to sell the Founders Series 500 mile trucks for around $200,000 and the non Founders Series long range trucks for around $180,000 and also a 300 mile shorter range Tesla Semi for around $150,000. However, Tesla eventually removed the pricing from their website for the semi. And since then, they haven't officially come out and declared a price for the truck, a new updated price. And this has left many like me kind of guessing at the price. However, it appears like the guessing game is over because I came across this April 12th article from the Sacramento Bee. And in this article, which was all about uh, 21 new Tesla semis being added to Pepsi's fleet at their Sacramento facility, the author revealed that based on comments from Alberto Ayala, the executive director of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District, who gave PepsiCo a $4.5 million grant towards the purchase of the Tesla semis, each of these Tesla semi trucks cost around $250,000 each. Now, when it comes to how this price compares to a traditional diesel truck, according to Alberto in this article, this is about twice the price of a similar diesel truck. I believe Alberto was referring to the cost of a typical diesel day cab truck and comparing that to the Tesla Semi. However, it's important to remember that despite the Tesla Semi being quite a bit more expensive on the front end, according to some calculations that I did last year, and also uh, some things that Tesla has mentioned in the past, the extremely efficient Tesla Semi should have a much lower cost of ownership over a typical diesel Semi, and each truck should save companies hundreds of thousands of dollars in their lifetimes, easily making up for that initial cost difference over the truck's lifetime. In addition, I believe it's very possible that this price, this $250,000 apparent price for the long range Tesla Semi, I believe that price actually could come down for two reasons. One, right now Tesla is not using 4680 batteries and at scale, the 4680 battery should be cheaper for Tesla to produce. Apparently Tesla is using batteries that they're purchasing from Panasonic. So there's a little bit of a markup there as well. So once Tesla is able to add 4680 batteries to the Tesla Semi battery pack, as is expected in the future, Tesla should be able to produce those at a lower price and have that government incentive of up to $45 per kilowatt hour. In addition, right now, Tesla is only building a small volume of Tesla semis. In the future, they hope to ramp this up to high volume. And at high volume, I believe the Tesla semi will be cheaper for Tesla to produce. And while the market would probably pay a higher price, I believe Tesla's uh, mission is to get as many of these semis on the road as possible. So I believe this price could come down, maybe even back down to around what Tesla uh, wanted it to be back in 2017 when they unveiled the Tesla Semi. Now beyond the 500 mile range Tesla Semi, Tesla also plans to produce a smaller 300 mile range truck that will apparently feature lithium iron phosphate batteries. I will discuss these details, but before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. In addition to other useful features, the Span Smart Electrical Panel can help extend your battery backup time by somewhere around 40% on average. It is currently compatible with several popular home battery backup systems like the Tesla Powerwall, Solar Edge, and LG Chem. Also, integration with Enphase is coming soon. Span allows you to remotely monitor and track your energy usage and prioritize which circuits get power during a power outage with real-time control, thus eliminating the need for a separate critical loads panel. 
To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you let Span know that John from CleanerWatt sent you. Over the last several years, Tesla has increasingly been using more and more lithium iron phosphate batteries in their products. Uh, for instance, like the standard range Model 3s and Ys being produced at Giga Shanghai, the rear wheel drive Model 3 made in Fremont, California, and their latest utility scale product, the Mega Pack, those all feature lithium iron phosphate battery packs. And apparently Tesla's power walls will soon follow suit as well and switch to lithium iron phosphate batteries, according to this recent Drive Tesla Canada article. We know that the long range Tesla Semi right now does feature a high nickel chemistry for its batteries, which is necessary for the long range that that vehicle has. However, Tesla had not previously confirmed the chemistry of the shorter range a Tesla Semi. However, in their recently published Master Plan Part 3 white paper, Tesla included the following chart, which seems to indicate that Tesla plans to use lithium iron phosphate batteries for this shorter range Tesla Semi that they refer to as semi light. Previously, I hadn't really given this topic much thought, but lithium iron phosphate batteries do make a lot of sense for the shorter range Tesla Semi for several reasons. For one, for longevity's sake. Generally speaking, lithium iron phosphate batteries last longer, have more cycle life than say nickel-based batteries. And they are more affordable to produce as well. And on top of all that, this is good news for a uh, battery supply because it gives once again, uh, Tesla more nickel based cells to use in other vehicles as they produce these Tesla semis. This also fits nicely with a previous topic that I discussed in a past video about a rumored Tesla and CATL deal where Tesla would license CATL's battery technology and build a new factory, potentially even in Texas, to supply batteries to Gigafactory Texas. If this deal involves Tesla manufacturing lithium iron phosphate batteries themselves, this would once again bring the cost of these batteries down even lower than if they source them from CATL. Now, when it comes to just how much of a price difference Tesla could see by building these battery cells themselves, uh, currently, according to this research paper, which I referenced in a previous video, due to an import tariff, shipping cost, and licensing fee, Tesla only saves around 6% by using lithium iron phosphate batteries that are imported into the USA from CATL versus their NCA batteries but the cost savings would be much greater if Tesla manufactured these batteries in-house even after paying CATL a licensing fee. This would also allow Tesla to take advantage of the IRA manufacturer's credit of up to $45 per kilowatt hour for a completed battery pack. With all of this in mind, if Tesla is indeed able to manufacture their own lithium iron phosphate battery cells for this particular truck, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Tesla is able to offer this semi light for around that $150,000 or less that they talked about back in 2017. In addition to battery chemistry, also notice that Tesla seems to have also confirmed at least roughly the Tesla Semi battery sizes as well because in this same chart, Tesla lists the Semi Heavy as having an 800 kilowatt hour battery pack and the Semi Light as having a 500 kilowatt hour battery pack. While I do understand that the battery sizes that Tesla listed on this chart are meant to be general in nature and not to represent exact figures for the battery sizes of each of these Tesla Semi variations, I do believe that these numbers actually represent a rounded down figure from reality because back in December of 2022, Elon Musk revealed on Twitter in this tweet that the Tesla Semi had an efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile with a clear path to improve that in the future. Note that this efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile is with the truck fully loaded and as Tesla demonstrated, the long range version can travel around 500 miles on a single charge with that full load. If you multiply 1.7 kilowatt hours, which is how much energy is needed per mile times 500 miles of range, that gives us an estimated 850 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you assume that the short range Tesla Semi has a very similar efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, and you multiply that by 300 miles of range, that gives us an estimated battery pack size of 510 kilowatt hours. And both of these numbers are within reasonable closeness to the 800 and 500 kilowatt hour numbers that Tesla listed in this chart. So once again, I do believe that we are pretty much right on when it comes to the battery sizes 
of these trucks. Moving on to other Tesla semi updates, Tesla did recently issue a recall for 35 Tesla semi trucks due to an issue with the electric brake module as Electrek recently reported in this article. Thankfully though, it looks like this is a relatively easy fix. And as of March 24th, as Electrek reported, no crashes or damage had been reported from this Tesla recall. Electrek also mentioned that the manufacturer of this recalled part was also going through a recall of their own that affected over 800 vehicles. So this is not just a Tesla issue. Next, when it comes to the reliability of the Tesla Semi, over the last several months, there have been a number of images posted on social media showing the Tesla Semi being towed, which has led to some concern about reliability issues with the Tesla Semi. However, as was recently reported by Inside EVs in this March 29th article, at least a portion of these quote unquote breakdowns were due to a software issue that was leading to the Tesla Semi infotainment screens flickering and even temporarily shutting off while driving. While this is an important issue, once again, I believe Tesla was able to fix this very easily with a software update and small issues are bound to come up with any new product. And now is the time for Tesla to work out all the kinks before they start mass production of the Tesla Semi. And mass production may happen as soon as 2024. I'm excited to see that PepsiCo now has 36 Tesla Semis in their fleet because those are displacing the need for diesel semis in their fleet. And in addition, I'm really looking forward to Tesla mass producing the Tesla Semi so we can see more and more diesel semis on the road being replaced by these electric semi trucks. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support really does make a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.